princess and founder of Carthage. Long ago and far away, there once lived a great king in the city of Tyre. Yes, my people. He was a wise and good king, beloved of his people. But it was not long before the king grew ill. Come, my children. He called to him his son Pygmalion and his daughter Alyssa. I am aware that my time on this earth is over and I am called to name my successor. Emilian grew concerned at this point, for he knew that he was to be the next ruler of Tyre. My son, though you are strong, it is your strength that leads you to forget your heart. I have chosen Elissa to rule in my stead. It has been foretold that you shall rule the greatest kingdom in all the world. With these words, the good king died. <laughs> Alyssa wept, but Pygmalion only turned quickly and called out to the court. The king, my father has gone to the gods. I am to reign in his stead. The court cheered. So it was that Pygmalion, not Alyssa, was named the next ruler of Tyre. Alyssa had no choice but to bend to her brother's will. King Pygmalion was not satisfied. He was angry that his father had chosen Alyssa to rule and wanted revenge. So he demanded that his sister marry a man named Aservis, a much older, wealthy nobleman who was struck by Alyssa's beauty. Alyssa was saddened by this request. Alyssa again did her brother's bidding and married Aservis. But the result was not as Pygmalion had expected. Aserbis treated Alyssa well. In return, Alyssa grew more and more devoted to her husband. Pygmalion was enraged and had Aserbis stolen away in hopes of stealing his treasure in his absence. Where is the money that your husband has hidden away? I know not, brother, and only wish to see my husband again. If I knew, I would give you all that we have, for his wealth has no meaning to me. Pygmalion stormed away, thinking that she must know where Serapis' treasure lay. That night, a servant stole into Alyssa's bedchamber and said, Fair maiden, troubles afoot. Your brother intends to lock you up forever if you do not tell him where Serapis' gold is buried. Please, you must leave and save yourself. Alyssa was obedient, but she was not unwise. So she disguised herself. And then she gathered her most trusted followers and proposed that they steal away together and build a new city based on trust and goodwill. Alyssa and her followers ran down to the river's edge and climbed aboard a great sailing ship. When Pygmalion heard of his sister's plan to leave, he sent soldiers down to the river's edge to stop them. 
Alyssa, however, had anticipated this and called out to the warriors as they reached the river. Here's your master's gold, but you must swim for it. So saying, Alyssa threw bag upon bag over the side of the ship just as they were sailing away. Million paused as he decided which action to take. Finally, his greed overwhelmed him. Fools got the gold! One by one, his men dove into the river after the bags. As Alyssa's ship sailed to safety. One by one, each man discovered that the bags were filled to the brim with sand. Alyssa sailed over the Mediterranean Sea until she reached the northern coast of Africa. There, she saw a land so fertile and welcoming, she knew in her heart that this was the place that she was destined to bring her people. Upon reaching the shore, Alyssa came upon a large group of people native to that land. Alyssa greeted them kindly, and they were enchanted by her grace and beauty. I have come only to bargain for land, she said. Nodding gratefully, Alyssa ordered a large oxide to be brought forth from the hull of the ship. She then had the hide cut into the thinnest of strips and laid these strips along the ground in a great semicircle. So it was that the great city of Carthage found its beginnings. It was not long before many people came to see the city that Alyssa had erected so quickly. Land was fertile. Crops were abundant. And travel and trade were easy along such a welcoming sea coast. Alyssa ruled in peace and prosperity, encouraging her people to widen their hearts and share their wisdom with all who longed to join them. In this way, Carthage grew strong and beautiful to behold. And so the prophecy was fulfilled. For Alyssa, in her wisdom and generosity, did finally rule over the most prosperous city in all the world.